Hey, what's going on guys? Krosama here. Now, I haven't done many Transformer reviews before, so this is kind of me getting my feet wet and just jumping right into it. Now, even though this is a Gundam channel, I honestly love Transformers well before I even got into the Gundam franchise, even before I got into most franchises I absolutely love today. I remember being a little kid, about like five years old, watching the G1 cartoons and really just being in love with it. However, I haven't been as much of a collector of Transformers as I have with Gundam, but I do have a pretty sizable collection of Masterpiece as well as other side little toys here and there of the Transformers franchise. So with this video, I do hope to maybe just jump into the franchise a little bit more and maybe kind of buy a few more toys here and there and then review them for you guys. But other than all that stuff, let's go ahead and jump right into the review. So what we're talking about today is going to be the Studio Series Cliff Jumper from the Bumblebee movie. Now, I absolutely love the Bumblebee movie. It was a great just refresher, honestly, of the Bayverse that we've had previously, even though it's pretty much tethered into the same storyline very loosely. I don't think it's canon, but it still kind of is a Bayverse movie. But I think they did a great job on it. It kind of captured the feel of the G1 cartoon. So with this, we have... Not necessarily a very G1 accurate cliff jumper, but it is a very good looking cliff jumper nonetheless. Now for the box, it's honestly just a regular Studio Series box. Nothing really too crazy about this. Now this is going to be the Takara Tomy. I don't know how much changes the Hasbro is going to have, but from what I've seen between the Takara uh, Tomy as well as the Hasbro, generally there's no change of the box. Price-wise, this is actually... Uh, pretty varied in Japan when it comes to pricing. At Yellow Submarine, they're pricing it about 3,000 yen, whereas places like Yamada Dinki is actually pricing it roughly around 1,900 yen. Uh, I don't really know what Adion is pricing it as, but I think the standard is pretty much 20 bucks here in Japan. So Hasbro may be a little bit cheaper. I'm not too positive on that. Now straight out of the box, this actually looks pretty good. I am not the biggest fan when it comes to the Studio Series just because I'm not the biggest fan of Bayformers. But I will say the overall level of details on this figure is really damn good for such a small figure. It's much like the Studio Series Optimus Prime. Honestly, it looked really good, and that was one of the ones I had to get because of just how much detail was put into it. It's kind of the same with this. Yeah, it's not a one-to-one -one exact recreation of the movie version that we've just seen, but it is something that looks really great, and... I don't, I don't really mind all the minor nitpicks such as the backpack or the weapon not being 100% accurate to what you've seen in the movie, uh, but it looks really good. I think the chest looks fine, all the details within the legs and uh, the arms. It's, it's a really good looking figure overall. Now in terms of articulation, it's really going to be pretty standard. You're going to have a good rotation at the head, you have a movement of the head that goes up, and to be honest, it's part of the transformation, but it just overall looks weird. It's kind of like an E.T. looking head. So yeah, I, I would prefer just to look at it from the front and not from the side. Now for accessories, it is going to have this multi-chamber cannon. Honestly, it looks really cool. You just slap it right into the hand and it looks like it's basically a part of the arm itself. Uh, I don't, it wasn't featured in the Bumblebee movie, but I still think it looks really cool. Now for the transformation, honestly, it's pretty simple. It's just a couple of swivels, a couple of turns, and little rotations here and there, but the end result is going to be a 21-step process to get to the Cybertronian car. It's pretty much going to be the Bumblebee Cybertronian car as well because that's kind of like the quirk of the cliff jumper. It's just the character is almost always identical to Bumblebee, and that's fine. I don't mind that. Uh, you know, basically Bumblebee sporting a really cool red color scheme, and cliff jumper usually has like you know horns or uh, something of the sorts. I, I like that. I like that characteristic about him, and the car really just has that nice, cute charm with the red. Honestly. I love it. I think it looks really sleek. It's something that would actually keep it in its alt form on the shelf. Vice keep it in the robot form. But either way, I'm going to be really happy no matter which form I actually display it in. It's kind of one of those things I would probably actually love to display both. Uh, if I buy, you know, buy an extra cliff jumper, I would have a robot and an alt mode right next to each other. Now, obviously, with articulation, you're not having much of that with this. You get rolling wheels, and that's pretty much it. But if you want to put it on a stand or get some like effect parts, you can definitely do that and maybe give it a little more dynamic approach. But it's not really going to add much to it unless you're getting a really cool diorama with it 
on the shelf, it's going to look a little awkward and maybe plain. So for my final thoughts and rating, honestly, it's a really good figure. It's a welcome addition to the Studio Series line. Don't really have any complaints or issues with it. But what I would say is this. If you are going to pick this up, you're probably already either going to be a huge Bayformer fan or you just like the design. That's fine. But if you're really not into anything of that sort and you're just like more of just, I want G1 or I want, you know, Armada or some of the sort, eh, maybe this might not be for you. But I will say, keep it on your watch list. So this is how I'm going to do my ratings. I have three different segments. It's going to be a cop it, a watch it, and a drop it. Now, if you are just one of the people that really liked Bayformers or you just like the figure overall, this is going to be a cop it for you. Uh, I would also put like a little asterisk there. If it's less than 20 bucks or 20 bucks or less, it's 100% a cop it. Anything above 20 bucks, it would be a watch it. And I'll also say if you are someone who just does not really enjoy uh, this type of figure, but you're intrigued, this is going to be a watch it for you. And if you're just absolutely hating this figure, then it's going to be a drop it. But my overall rating is going to be cop it. But that's it for me, guys. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for everyone who's been supporting me trying to do some uh, Transformer reviews. I've been really just like shy on trying to do them because I'm not. this isn't really my territory. But I have been into Transformers way longer than I have been into Gundams. So it seems kind of natural. But let me know in the comment section below what you thought of the video. If you're new here, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. And if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and click like. But that's it for me, guys. I'll be seeing you all in the next video. Bye-bye.